I love camping and utilizing the Psalms because David is, is describing and, and giving glory to God through so many different passages that, that are about nature. Um, and when you have your senses, when you're in it, you know, you've got the, the touch, the smell, your eyes are seeing it, just how David was seeing it. Um, those things are just make such a big impact on your heart and your soul. Welcome to Calvary Conversations. My name is Sean LePage. I'm the, uh, the uh, chairman of the Ministry Studies Department and assistant professor at Calvary University. And my guest today is Tressa Barnes, and she is the uh, uh, she is the an assistant professor of outdoor adventure leadership and sports management here at Calvary. Uh, she's also a Calvary grad from uh, back in 2005 with a biblical yeah, counseling degree. Days. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And uh, she also uh, studied at Emporia State uh, and, and studied physical education, health and recreation. Uh, Tressa, it's great to have you with us today. Thank you so much. I'm so happy to be here. Good. Well, did, did I have that correct that you're, uh, are you the director of the Outdoor Adventure Leadership Program or? Uh, yeah, it it's a, um, it's a, the coordinator of the Outdoor Adventure Leadership Program. Okay. Okay. And you're yeah. also our former uh, women's basketball coach. Uh, mm -hmm. A lot of people might know you that way, but uh, well, uh, I'm, I've invited Tressa to come on the program today and, and discuss uh, outdoor adventure leadership. And we want to discuss Calvary's program because uh, uh, it's, it's getting a, a lot of uh, buzz around here and, and uh, people are talking about it and it's, it's new and it's exciting. But we also want to just talk about, you know, the, 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 uh, the bigger conversation behind that of, of uh, the, the value of of the outdoor experience and 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 kind of some of the the ideas and 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 hopes behind this program as well. So so uh, Tressa, let's just start with uh, the basics. What exactly yeah. is outdoor adventure leadership? Uh, well, you know, I think when we are exploring what outdoor adventure leadership is, we kind of have to take it from a biblical perspective first of all, uh, and just knowing that you know, God created an incredible world around us. Um, and within that dynamic of, of what he's created, we get the opportunity and the chance to observe it. Um, and just to, again, bring honor and glory to his name through what we've observed in his creation. And so a lot of us think about camping or, um, you know, going on a, a trip someplace. And that's uh, a lot of fun to do and, and, and see and watch. But when we, when we look at what, what God has used the creation um, is to grab people's attention and, and kind of almost in a, in a way that jolts them in some ways. So for instance, <clears throat> you know, God took Moses, led Moses up to the mountain um, a couple of times, you know, and, and had, um, conversations with him. Uh, we see, you know, the Israelites crossing the Red Sea and the Jordan river. Um, we see them out in the wilderness, um, completely dependent on God. Uh, here they were in Egypt. They were in a city, um, an incredible city. Um, and yet God takes them out into the wilderness. And so the, those types of remote settings, um, you don't get civilization, uh, you get uh, a wilderness and that wilderness brings up vulnerabilities. Uh, you know, the Israelites were really concerned about what they were gonna eat and God provided for them in, in an, an incredible miraculous way, um, but it meant that they had to be dependent on him. And so, those are things that I really think that God really uses in, in our own personal life. Uh, Jesus used it wilderness in just a couple of different ways. Um, he personally retreated. Um, we, we know that he retreated to the mountains um, to pray, or he got into a boat um, and uh, away from people, away from the distractions um, to pray. We know that he also taught his disciples um, either on the sea or on the mountain or some rural place, 
Um, and then also when people would come and follow him, um, even the feeding of the 5,000 was outside of a city uh, in a remote location where, again, they had to be dependent on him. So um, these are just, you know, a couple of examples. Um, but really, when we think about our daily lives and our distractions, if we can consider the action of going, just like with Jesus and the disciples or these other different people in scriptures, the action of going someplace else, going someplace different to get away, get away from the distractions, get away from um, the debilitating opinions of others even, um, and to find some time where we can be alone with God um, and give our focus over to what he would have us do um, and, and just praying um, and communicating with him. Um, and that's how I think it builds a great foundation um, for uh, us as believers to think about God's creation in a, a bigger way than what we have been doing so far, probably within our daily lives. How many times do we think about going to the mountains? How many times do we think about going to the river? You know, we don't think about those times as much as maybe we should. Um, and so trying to, to take that and then say, okay, well, how do we apply leadership to that? Um, how do we create experiences for people? And we have camps out there. We've got um, trekking guides. We've got wilderness guides. We've got people out there who are utilizing this as a ministry experience to facilitate in a safe environment to give the things that, that are needed um, to create time with God. But a lot of us don't see that here within the city because we're only looking at the things that are distracting to us. Um, our phones, our incredible busy schedule, you know, I, I, the summer break was great, but I would say that I was still filled with busyness. I don't know about you, Sean, but we're, we're just always busy and, and that's our lives today. How can we get away from that um, is, is where we need to go maybe uh, to get some rest and recuperation. Um, so those are just a couple of things that, that outdoor ministries can really impact and there's a wide variety of activities. I think some people are intimidated to do outdoor things because either they don't know how to do it, they feel ill-equipped to do it, and um, it might seem scary and out of your comfort zone. But that out of the comfort zone is where it would be good to push us towards and challenge us to maybe experience something different. Yeah, that's good. So you're, you're talking about the value of of just getting away from distractions. And so I can imagine a lot of people saying, well, I can do that without going outdoors. <laughs> you know, I can, I can uh, go get a motel room somewhere and just, uh, you know, turn off the TV and, uh, si you know, turn off my phone and, and just get away. And, and, and that's certainly true. Right. Um, mm -hmm. but, but, you know, something that, that we were talking about before we, before we started is, is just the value of, and, and, and and I, I loved your examples from scripture that, that uh, the wilderness is actually, um, it's actually an important um, aspect of scripture, it's an important metaphor as well. Um, and, uh, you know, I just think there's something special about, um, about being uh, out in God's, God's creation and, and seeing it. Uh, I think you said something about a different, uh, a, a, a different way or, or, or whatever, you know, we don't, we don't always um, uh, get to see um, the, the beauty of, of God's creation uh, in our, in our kind of our, our normal routines or whatever. And, and so, so getting outdoors and going and, and seeing the, the beauty of God's creation can be a big deal. And um so, so, right. I mean, th there's, there's two aspects there. There's the aspect of getting away and getting time to just think and, and, and assess, but there's also just the, the value of, of being outdoors and, and really experiencing mm. God's creation. Right. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, so outdoor adventure leadership, that is uh, that I assume that's, that's training, training students um, to, to, to lead in adventures of some kind what what does that that uh leadership entail and what does their training look like yeah so here at calvary um 
we want to do a couple of things in order to train somebody who would want to go into um, a career or a ministry uh, where they would facilitate and do um, outdoor adventure leadership. So we want to make sure that um, our students are equipped in, in understanding um, the Bible. Uh, and here at Calvary, we, we do a lot of Bible training um, with our students. Um, we also do uh, business sorts of things. So, you know, with, within a camp, within a business, you still have um, accounts payable. You know, you still have um, HR, you still have all these other different facets uh, that go into making a, a business or an organization a reality. So we want to make sure that our students have that. And then the, the, the third portion of that is the, the training. So the hard skills of understanding what, um, what wilderness guides even look like. What does, uh, what does it look like to, to do mountaineering? What does it look like to do backpacking and, and uh, uh, camping? Um, what is the equipment that's needed for that? Uh, what about wilderness? Um, medis, uh, medical guide. Uh, this is, these are things that are, are good to have um, in order for somebody to be effective and safe. What does risk management look like? Um, so many times uh, you'll see how groups of people will go and, and you hear the nightmares, you know, you hear about um, something that goes horribly wrong. Um, and that's kind of a, a story that sticks in people's heads and usually is the thing that makes it uh, really intimidated intimidating to go on a trip, right? But these things happen so far and few, be few between because lots of people are equipped on safety and how to organize a trip. Um, but it takes planning. It takes um, the knowledge and the know-how of how to, to, to go through um, nature and how to go through it in a proper manner. So how do we make sure that somebody doesn't get dehydrated? How do we make sure that you know, somebody doesn't go off the trail um, and get themselves seriously injured and hurt. Uh, so we, we have to have those different types of uh, classes ready and available. So we do, um, we do specific classes, like one class is just for um, uh, hiking, one class is just for camping uh, or um, rock climbing and rappelling. Um, Equine trekking is another one, canoeing and kayaking. Uh, so that way we can, we can tailor, you know, some of these things because this is a lot of content. Plus you need practice. You need to know how to be good at these things if you're going to teach people how to do them as well. So they have to take a hands-on active approach on, on how to do these things and how to plan for them effectively. And so, so that's kind of what our, our whole program kind of looks like. Good. So probably a lot of uh, a lot of people will be familiar with uh, the business of outdoor adventures. You know, uh, maybe they've gone on a float trip. My family got family mm -hmm. and I got to do that last year. Had a blast. Um, yeah. You know, camping and all that kind of stuff. But um, how is you, you mentioned ministry? Uh, how is uh, outdoor adventure leadership being used in missions and in ministry and outreach and in missions? Yeah. For sure. So there are about, um, I, as far as I know of, about 32 uh, like-minded um, camps and, and organizations out there uh, around the world. Um, now, there's many more than that, obviously, but as far as um, what you know is considered um, a, a place where you're you're going to get the gospel and you're going to get, um, uh, you know, even counsel. Um, in, in good ways. Um, there's about 32 different camps out there um, around the world. So one is in Peru, Ecuador, um, Zambia, um, New Zealand, Australia, a couple in the United Kingdom, uh, Romania, um, uh, lots of different places, um, places that we, we don't even think about. You know, I, I think there's times where we are also thinking oh, outdoor only happens in the United States because we have the Rocky Mountains, the Smoky Mountains, we have you know, all these cool rivers and such, but uh, there's a huge world out there that has even more to offer. Yeah. And uh, I mean, uh, I'm gonna get a little nerd, nerdy on you here, but you know, uh, Lord of the Rings has an epic scenes, right? And those scenes come from New Zealand. 
how cool is it to go to New Zealand and to actually experience those for yourself? Um, that is God's creation right there, you know, and uh, how incredible is it to go around the world and experience maybe some of these different places? Um, so when we are thinking about ministry in those different places, um, evangelism is a huge part of this and God using a camp um, to facilitate that, um, to make it possible for people to be vulnerable, um, to go through some sort of a challenge, um, whether it be in, in hiking or a wilderness trek, um, which are, you know, kind of hard um, or uh, different things that, that make it to where the conditions might not be ideal. And so you're in the situation where, where you may be really, really happy or really, really sad, whatever the case may be, it's a teachable moment. And we want um, our, our students here at Calvary to be able to seize those teachable moments and take initiatives towards that end too. Um, but evangelism is a huge part of camping ministry because we don't have everybody coming to a camp um, who's a Christian. Um, this is a great place um, to show Jesus, you know, and, and even in, in when I was a camp counselor in college, um, I had incredible opportunities to lead kids to Christ. And we all know that. Uh, lots of people have testimonies of getting saved at camp. Uh, but then there's that discipleship part, which I think is really, really just as important too. Um, getting people into a closer relationship with God, um, getting them to see uh, who God really is and how loving and kind and incredible um, he has been towards us and in just even the creation in and of itself. Okay. Um, so I'm, I'm interested in um, kind of the history of this and at Calvary, because I do know that you know, at one point, Calvary uh, had a had a degree that was focused on uh, people who wanted to go into camp ministry specifically, mm -hmm. um, um, and I assume that uh, that you know someone who who gets a, a degree in AOL Outdoor Adventure Leadership but can do more than just uh, camp ministry. But tell us a little bit about how uh, this uh, this program developed for Calvary and um, you know where did the idea come from and and uh, and uh, you know uh, what what does it look like specifically so uh, I, I also understand it's part of the the actually part of the business department correct mm -hmm. so yeah. so just tell us a little bit about how it came to be yeah um, we have an alumnus by the name of Paul Ewing and uh, he <clears throat> is also uh, uh, the founder of uh, Living Waters Canoe Ministry um, here in Missouri, uh, just Southern Missouri, and about two and a half hour drive from Calvary, actually. Um, and he has such a great relationship with Calvary and uh, really just has a heart for missions as well. And so um, he had this idea uh, to start to think about developing a program where we could um, just have students get trained in this area because it is a popular area. Everybody likes to go to different places. Everybody likes to go to camps or go on a trek or go on some sort of an adventure. Um, and so he he thought it would be a great idea to, to see if maybe Calvary would be open to the possibility of developing a program like this. Um, come to find out there's only seven uh, colleges and universities that actually offer an outdoor adventure program of some sort. Um, and so that kind of was a surprise um, because we, we see adventure in different ways and seem to think that it's popular. We, we think that people have hobbies in different outdoor types of programs. Um, so it was kind of a shock to see that there was such a limited amount of, of training that's in this area. Um, and so we started researching it and trying to see if, if this would be a possibility. And um, definitely was, and we put a program together um, and uh, got it connected with the business program because the, in the previous uh, degree, it was catered towards um, counseling and camping combined um, in, in the ministry, but there wasn't uh, any business uh, to tailor towards it. And the business part is important because of um, the, the money, the budgeting, 
um, the staffing, um, the HR part, the programming, you have to have some of this stuff in order it, for it to become possible um, and, and, and for it to be professional as well. Uh, and so that's why we decided to tailor it towards um, the business as well uh, and, and give it an emphasis in towards um, those hard skills that they need for the camping portion as well. So uh, we're also doing it as a major. So if somebody wants to do counseling and camping, they can, or youth ministry and camping or um, outdoor adventure or uh, any of those different other degrees that are out there that they might want to tack on a minor as well towards. Interesting. Um, so, you know, uh, I can I can imagine uh, a lot of uh, youth pastors wanting to study this. Mm -hmm. uh, I know that when I was a youth pastor, we did a lot of camps and and tried to do a lot of uh, outdoor activities. Uh, so, so talk a little bit about how local church leaders and staff, like youth pastors, uh, might benefit from studying in this program, even if they don't really you know, care about getting another degree, uh, how, how could they benefit from just, just uh, you know, taking some classes or, or studying uh, in this program? Yeah, uh, you know, we've got um, some program management classes that are uh, really good for just designing a, a program that you would want to have and to facilitate within your church. Um, and then also just, since it is an online program, um, there's there's training and there's instruction on how to do some of these uh, outdoor adventure activities um, to where you wouldn't necessarily have to come onto Calvary's campus in order to be trained in them. Uh, so, for instance, you know, learning how to to do things like fishing. Okay, well, what do what do we need for a, a fishing trip? You know, what kind of gear do we need for that? And um, how do we make sure that Everybody stays safe and nobody gets hooked in the hand. You know, those different types of things are kind of important and valuable to have. Um, and then also uh, taking the, just what we, what we talked about previously with um, how do we facilitate good intentional conversations with experiential learning, um, hands-on learning that's done in the wilderness. Uh, and those are, are things that, are good to have that can be taught. Uh, so that way you're not having to start out from scratch. You know, um, if you're doing a trek in the mountains, um, how do you come up with those questions? How, how, do, how do you then take uh, a passage of scripture and, and say, okay, here, here are some truths that you can draw from. I love camping and utilizing the Psalms because David is, is describing and, and giving glory to God through so many different passages that, that are about nature. Um, and when you have your senses, when you're in it, you know, you've got the, the touch, the smell, your eyes are seeing it, just how David was seeing it. Um, those things are just make such a big impact on your heart and your soul. And so how can we bring those truths to light? We can do that when we're, when we're trained in the classroom to be able to make that happen. And, and talk also just about some specific ideas, just some, uh, uh, say, say uh, you know, ministry leaders is listening to this conversation and, and they're, 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 they've been reminded of the value of getting outdoors. What are some ideas that you would have for them for, for, for getting their students or or their small group, or uh, their their church, or their family outdoors. What what are some things that they they could do? Yeah, I you know, and that's kind of a wide array of people uh, that we're talking yeah. about, which is great. Um, so you know, with ministry workers, so let's just take your church staff for instance. Um, how do we how can we facilitate maybe uh, more unity within the group as well as some spiritual growth? Um, what can we do to make this happen? Uh, you know, taking them to a, a retreat center or a camp uh, and, and just spending, you know, as, as little as two days um, can make such a big impact um, on your staff. And <clears throat> it's the getting away. And again, going back to scripture, Jesus got away from the crowds. He went away and that has value towards it. And so, getting that time away to, to facilitate a retreat 
where we're taking the scripture and we're, we're utilizing it, we're praying um, in, in our spiritual growth, but also um, doing these activities. So for instance, you know, when we're doing uh, rock climbing or we're um, going on a hike or we're doing a high ropes course or low ropes course, um, all of these things provide uh, pathways towards better communication, encouragement. It creates vulnerabilities within us that we might not have thought we had or fears that we had that we can then take back and we can reflect on. Um, it provides a pathway towards um, good intentional conversations as well. So I think that there's a lot of um, uh, churches out there that are so wrapped up in trying to make sure that we have all the ministries done and completed the way that it needs to be done, but we forget about the people that are doing this. How do we fill their cups up? And if we can do it with just as simple as just taking them away for two days, um, it can make the biggest difference in the world. Um, it can resolve conflicts. Now, I'm not saying that this is a, a magical formula that's going to make everything right. better. That's, you know, we all know realistically that's not something that can happen, but, um, but what it can do is it can provide healing the potential for that. Um, and that's where we, we want to do is create those opportunities. Camps, um, especially Christian camps, will have the sole purpose of creating the best hospitality that they can so that your group can experience some of these things. And so um, <clears throat> having, having that be the pathway is a great opportunity for your staff or for yourself um, and, and for your family. So let's just take your family. What, what benefits can this have for you? It takes you away from those distractions, from the maybe the people-pleasing mentality that's, that, that can just capture us so much when we're in ministry. Um, the, the pressures that are out there um, can be so debilitating. Uh, we need to fill our cups up as ministry um, leaders, um, pastors, youth pastors, whatever the case may be. And with our families, oh, it can, it be, it can be so fruitful. Um, because our kids can experience things. Um, we, we get the joy of, of watching our kids experience things. And, and we know that that's so great and, and even provides healing for us um, in some regards. It, it gives us communication pathways towards our kids, um, towards our spouses um, that can help uh, with any sort of relational conflict. Again, it's opportunities and it's intentional conversations that we're looking for. But then we, we target the youth groups as well. And in youth groups, um, we have the distractions that all teenagers have, which is our cell phones, our TVs, our computers, our social media, all those things are there. But when we're at a camp or a, a, a place to get away, a lot of times there's not self-service. So we don't have those things there. Um, and we have to now look beyond ourselves. Um, so... Uh, just uh, uh, to give you a, a just a story, I went on a, um, a float trip this weekend with my family, and it was a five hour trip, and it was it was great because I got to to see my daughters help people. Um, there were a couple of canoes that tipped over, and there were things floating in the river, and and we had stopped and to rest, um, and they saw these things floating in the river, and they go out and they you know they grab them and they help them. Um, and, and as we're floating along, you see others helping people along the way. Um, so now we're fostering this opportunity to help um, these teenagers to see beyond themselves and, and to start um, building with other people um, and forming the sense of com community um, that might not have been there before. Uh, and so <clears throat> vulnerabilities create uh, an opportunity to foster even better trust as well. And, and that's always needed with, with teenagers, especially <laughs> um, as they're navigating the throes of life. So those are just a couple of things um, that I think are beneficial to getting away. Well, I'm, I'm feeling pretty inspired. It's, it's pretty hot outside these days, but I'm feeling pretty inspired uh, to, to get out there and, and uh, do something with my family. Uh, so, yeah. uh, we're, we're out of time, uh, yeah. Tressa, but uh, I, I need to shut off my timer there. Um, we're, we're out of time, but uh, <laughs> probably going to edit that out. But um, yeah. so we're, we're out of time, but um, uh, tell us, uh, let me see how I, how I would say this. Um, 
So uh, we're out of time, Tressa, but uh, for anyone who's interested in the uh, Outdoor uh, Adventure Leadership Program at Calvary, how can they get some more information? Yeah, um, if, if anybody wants to uh, take any classes, um, you know, uh, just going to Calvary's website um, and just putting in a, an inquiry um, and uh, somebody will email me with that inquir inquiry and I will be more than happy to answer any questions, um, give any ideas to any youth pastors or pastors that would like to even do maybe an activity before even the summer ends um, or considering something to do this fall. Um, lots of different simple opportunities that are out there that don't involve a, a huge trip if they feel like that's, you know, beyond what they can do right now, but doing something, you know, that only takes about a, a couple of hours out of the day um, is still very beneficial. And so any, anything that they have um, uh, that would, would lead towards an opportunity for them um, I would be more than happy to help. So uh, yeah, just definitely shoot me an email, tressa.barnes at calvary.edu. Great. And uh, Tressa, thanks for sharing with us today about the Outdoor Adventure Leadership Program and, and, and also just the thoughts about uh, the value of being outside. Yes, definitely. Great to be on the show. All right. And those of you who've been listening, we appreciate your time. Appreciate you listening to this uh, conversation. And uh, we, uh, we hope you'll participate in the conversation by going to uh, cal uh, calvary.edu and looking for the, uh, the Calvary Conversations webpage. Uh, or you can now find us on Facebook. Uh, we have a, a group on Facebook and you can uh, search that out. And, and uh, uh, you, have to be, you have to get an invitation to, to, uh, to participate, but you can, you can request one by going to that on Facebook. So uh, thanks for joining us today. Uh, grace and peace. Thank you for joining us for this edition of Calvary Conversations, a service of Calvary University in Kansas City, Missouri. We invite you to participate in the conversation by contacting us through the Calvary University website, calvary.edu, or by calling us at 816-322-0110. Join us again next week for another Calvary Conversation.